Hello Internet! In this video, we're going to cover uh, ourselves in jelly. Uh, no, no, we're not. We're going to cover getting uh, some stock data. Well, actually, really, the, the tutorial's more on Selenium because uh, someone requested that. Um, so basically, the idea is we're going to be doing web scraping with Selenium. Uh, and the reason you would want to use Selenium is because there are web pages which have dynamically loaded things which don't have, for example, a URL, a page that exists for them. Um, or maybe it's difficult to get URL so you couldn't figure it out because it's it's been deliberately created to annoy you so you can't actually get the URL to web scrape elsewise or easily. So for example, if we look at Taylor Wimpy now, which is one of the stocks here, this is the URL, if you can see that. It's got this annoying code at the end that you could you could figure out because it's got the ISN in there, it's got some other stuff in there. So you could figure out what it is, but you've got the chicken and egg problem because if you want to get data about this stock, well, you needed the data about the stock to get the URL to get the data about the stock. So we're going to use Selenium to fix that. Um, and the way we're going to do that is we're going to interact with the web page like we were a real user, uh, as in we can do clicking, we can do searching. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick a stock, we're going to search for it, so uh, we're going to do something like United Utilities, which is what the one I always do. We're going to click on the first link. That will bring us up with this page. We'll be able to get the URL and we'll also be able to like scrape any data we want. So we'll probably go ahead and just scrape some price data. Um, so let's go ahead and get started with that. The very first thing you're going to need to do is install the Chrome driver uh, for your operating system of choice and also make sure you have it so that it is in line with whatever version of Chrome you currently have. That is most likely going to be the current stable release. You'll know if you're on the basis channel because you would have opted into it. Um, so I would go for downloading the current stable release. Once you've downloaded that and unzipped it, you can go to your uh, downloads folder, move it to a new folder, and you want to create a folder actually. And that folder is going to be called, what's it going to be called? Uh, you're going to call it bin. Or you can call it whatever the hell you like, actually. Um, so I've got my bin folder here. It just has the Chrome driver in it. You want to move that Chrome driver to this bin folder. Then you're going to want to run uh, chmod plus x on the Chrome driver. I've already done it, so it's not going to make a difference. So what that does is it changes the permission of the file so that it is now executable and can be actually run. Um, once you've done that, you need to change your uh, profile and add this to your path. To do that, um, the best thing to do is to open your uh, bash profile if you're on a Mac. Um, and to do that, you need to type in this, not bash profile. And at the bottom of this, we want to add um, some stuff. And you want to add the line, export path, what I've added here. This will be in the description if you want to follow along. I don't need to do that because I've installed Z Shell, so I've done it in a slightly different place. So if you've installed Z Shell and you know about it, put it in your Z Shell RC file. Uh, and when you save it, you want to then type in, uh, not source, source, and then whatever file you saved it to. Uh, if you have multiple terminal windows open, it might be easier just to close the terminal and reopen them all because you'll have to do source on every single one of them. Um, but once that's done, you should be able to run the Chrome driver dash V and you will see that you have the Chrome driver and you what version you have. Great. And if you if that comes up with something perfect, you've actually installed it. Another point to note is if you're on Catalina, you will have to do the standard thing, which is go to your security and preferences and say you want to open this file because the security is got quite tight on Catalina. So if you're using Catalina, this will be something you'd be quite used to anyway. Okay, so time to get down to some actual coding. Um, and for that, oh, before we code, actually, the, the one thing we do need to do is we need to do pip install selenium like that. I've already installed it, so it's not going to actually do anything. Uh, but let's let's create a little file. We'll call it main.py. And we're going to do some standard imports. And I, like hell, I'm not going to type these out. I've got them in a list over here. We want to import all of these. 
Um, I'm going to quickly explain what they are. So the web driver is what we're going to actually be using to actually do the web driving. Uh, actually open a Chrome browser. Uh, you could do it with Firefox. You could do it with many other browsers. But if you're following along, then you've just installed the Chrome driver. So we're going to use Chrome anyway. Um, by this is how we're going to access certain elements. This gives us access to keys. So we can say press enter, for example. Uh, this allows us to wait until, um, for example, uh, an element is loaded or the expected condition happens, and we're going to use that with WebDriver wait to check that um, certain conditions have loaded. I actually don't think we need to... Mm, yeah, I'm going to leave time in there. Um, time is something you really shouldn't use, because what typically will happen is you use time.sleep for something. Um, when you're using selenium and really you should be using its expected conditions and wait until things sh show up and are visible before you start doing stuff but I'm going to keep it in because we might need it just to budge some things in this little video so let's get started start off by creating an instance of the web driver we want to use so use web driver and then we're going to be using chrome so do that now we have that. Uh, what we then need to do is we then need to get the web page. So we need to load the web page that uh, we want to load. So to do that, let's go to our Chrome browser. Uh, we don't want that page. We want to go, let's pick any page actually. We'll pick, yeah, the home page of the London Stock Exchange, like that. We'll do that. And then we also want to create an instance of um, WebDriver wait. So we want to type in wait and then say WebDriver wait, pass in our driver and also pass in a time, a maximum time we want to allow it to wait. So 10 seconds. What this means is when we wait for an element to load, so let's say we're looking for, I don't know, the search bar. We want to check that when we load the page, so coming back to Chrome, when we load this page, because there's a there's a small period where certain elements, like you just saw, certain elements reloaded, you won't have seen them, so you have to wait to see them. Um, what we want to check is that they appear, and if they don't appear within 10 seconds, we'll just stop doing what we're doing and just say they're not they're not available. So that's what we're doing uh, with that bit of code, although we're not actually specifying any elements yet, it's just something we're going to be using. So uh, the first thing we want to do, of course, is we want to search for a stock. Now I'm going to hard code some of these things, so we're going to be specifically searching for um, United Utilities, so let's just you know call that. We're going to define a search method that takes the ticker of a stock if you want to get a list of the tickers of the stock, you can check the link in the description uh, and the previous videos because there will be on my website a download for a CSV for a whole load of tickers if you just want to play along with this. And if you wanted to import the CSV into a Python thing, I also have videos on that as well. Uh, so that's how we're going to define this. So let's go ahead and actually do that. So we're going to say search ticker. And what do we need to do? Well, we need to first get a search element. And the way we can do that is we can say driver find element by now I think we can use the ID from when I was looking around at this earlier so let's get the ID of that element so this is the search bar we're going to be using right click inspect make that's a little bit bigger okay yeah I uh, import ID is this so we can steal that and input it there, and that will find the right uh, element. Then what we're going to do is we want to send the keys. We want to type in the ticker, so we can say search l dot send underscore keys, pass in the ticker like that. Okay, so what happens? Let's let's just look through what happens if we actually do this without running the program. If I type in that, well, this this little box comes up. So we want to wait until this box is visible. Now, I did save this earlier because it, it turned out to be a right pain to actually get this to show up and do it, but it's, it's this thing here will wait to show up. So this UI menu item is the class we want to show up. Um, it's disappeared at the moment, but just because I managed to click on it at the right time, it's, sh it's showing up in the console. It's a little bit of a pain sometimes to do these things. So we want this, we want UI menu item and we want to wait until that shows up before we do anything else. Because what we're going to do 
is we're going to search, so type it back in, that comes up, press down, down, press enter, and it will take us to the page we want to go to. So that's what we're going to do. So let's go back to the code and we'll, we'll do that. So the way we need to do that is we need to say, call that wait we created earlier, say until, EC for expected conditions, uh, visibility of, and I've spelled visibility completely wrong, what an absolute mong, of element located. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say by class underscore name in capitals. Oh, oh, we need to also uh, add another bracket here because this has to be basically one argument. Um, and then we pass in that UI menu item and then two brackets to close that, another one to close the wait until, pip pip pow, winner winner chicken dinner. And that should work. So uh, the next thing we need to do, well, we need to press down down and then press enter because that's what we did a second ago. So just to remind you, type this in, the thing shows up, down, down, press enter, and it will load the page. The reason we don't want to ask about waiting for um, this to, uh, you know, finding the element on the screen here. So let's say, you know, I type in this here. I don't want to ask about finding this element. We, we know we're going to be searching, for, we're getting the first uh, listing. It's going to be most likely the first listing because we're entering the ticker, which is a unique identifier. So it's pretty much always going to be the first one that comes up. Might be wrong on that one, but from the ones I've tested, it seems like it will be always the first one. Um, but yet, yeah, this also uh, stops us from having that chicken and egg problem that I was mentioning earlier, where you need to know, for example, the name of the stock. Uh, if you don't know that, then you can't check that the name is in the, the element, and we can't then click on it. So let's go back, and what we'll say is we'll say search L, Whoopsie daisy. We'll say send keys. This time we will just pass in keys dot down. And then we also want to do the same thing again. And a third time, but this time we want to press enter. So it's going to be enter like that. And that's our search function done. So if we were to run this code now, what we would expect is that the Chrome driver would open, we'd see the page, we would search for the page, and we would end up on the stock page that we searched for. I'm just adding a sleep at the moment of three seconds, and then I'm going to call uh, driver.quit. The reason I want to call driver.quit is because otherwise you end up having a whole load of Chrome instances up. It's really annoying. So that it doesn't open in the current Chrome version, it opens a new version down here, and then it will open a new one every time you open it and let you quit out of it. So just so you're aware. But let's go ahead and run that. And doo -doo -doo -doo. it's working, it's searching, it's going down, and it's clicked it really quick, and it's done it, and we're on the right page. And then the three seconds have elapsed, and it's closed out of that Chrome window. So that works fine. Um, one of the things we want to do, though, of course, is we want to be able to get the URL of that stock because what I would recommend doing, Selenium's not great for actual web scraping. It's really a test automation framework, so it's used by um, quality assurance people to check that the web apps that are being developed uh, actually work as expected and so on and so forth. Um, but it's not great for web scraping. I've made other videos, so using Scrapey, that's a better choice, and also Beautiful Soup. So. What you might want to use Selenium for in this case is to get these annoying URLs of this particular website, which is what I was describing at the start of the video. Um, so that's one of the things we're going to do to actually get the URL. And the way we can do that, really simple, we can just create a little one. We'll call it get stock underscore URL like that. And we can just return uh, driver, whoopsie daisy, driver dot current URL like that. And that will get us the current URL. You might be wondering why did I bother creating a method for that? Uh, the reason is is that if this ever changes, we can easily change it. We could also switch this out for different websites and so on and so forth. Do all sorts of little things like that. We could also um, easily switch that out if we're going to if we're actually going to test this code. We could mock this out really easily. I'm getting off track. Ignore me. I'm going I'm going all over the place. Uh, but yes. So we've got this. 
uh, get stock URL. So if we were running this again, we would expect that we'd also, in addition to have done everything we wanted to do, we'd also get the URL of the stock printed. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. And let's see if it works. Ooh, it's loading up. It's going to do the search. It's doing it. It's worked. And you can just see there in the background that it has indeed printed out the URL of the stock. So then we could use that. We could save that to a database or a CSV file. And then we could use that to do better scraping. But just to show you, we can still do some scraping with um, Selenium. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to get the price of the stock. So quite simple. Create another method will say get last price like this. And this time we're just going to return a driver uh, find element. This time we're going to be using something called XPath by XPath. Uh, just to show you. Um, and what we can do, let's go back to Chrome. Um, we're going to look at the page and we want to get this, this price value here. Now, when I looked at this earlier, there isn't a identifier for this. There isn't a class for this. This table doesn't really have an easily identifiable class. Now, I've gone over this previously in, in uh, videos on Beautiful Sweep and Scrape, I, how we could do this. But there's another way we can do this um, here. And a more common way of doing this is to use the what's called next path. Um, so I've gone ahead and installed a Chrome extension, link in the description, called XPath Finder. Click on that, it's going to give us the XPath we can use to specifically get this element. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that. And then we can basically just refer to this element by the XPath. And it's a little bit better again. I've copied the wrong thing somehow. I don't know how the hell I did that. I copied the wrong thing. So we'll do, there we go, got it. And then just call dot text on that. That's a bloody long line. Oh well, case okay, sirrah, sirrah. And finally, we want to just say uh, print get last price. So what we're expecting to see is it loads up Chrome, it searches, it goes through everything, it prints out the stock URL, and it also prints out the last price. So run that. Oh, is it going to work? It's been working so far. It does it. Yes, it's working. Boom. And it's printed out the URL and it has also printed out the price. So you could run this, you know, whenever you like. What I would really recommend you do is sort of run it specifically just to get these URLs and then use something else to actually do web scraping of the data from the pages here. Um, but like I say, the reason you would use Selenium um, is because it enables you to get data if you wanted to for things that are dynamically loaded an example would be uh th i need to turn this damn thing off uh an example would be this chart here see how this when you click on it it loads there's a little bit of loading it does the url doesn't change so the only way we could access this data is by specifically interacting with these things here unfortunately getting the data from here is just a complete waste of time there's nothing really to get which is why i've done the example where we can actually interact with a web page to search for something that would be difficult to get in terms of getting this URL specifically just to go to that page and then get the data off that page. So I'm rambling. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Uh, there's some instructions in the description of anything you have missed. If you have any questions or if I've gone over something way too quick or I just haven't covered things at all, leave a comment down below and I will answer them as fast as possible. Um, subscribe for more videos like this. Leave a like if you like the video, of course. And uh, thank you very much for watching. Ta-ta!